All right. Hello, my name is Joel Hoff. I work for the Kirk County School District, and uh, I was asked to make a quick video explaining uh, this question, answering this question. Now that we are back in person for grades four through 12, how do the weekly metrics change? And as you know, uh, now that we have shifted to be um, in-person instruction, the metrics uh, that we had to follow in order to get there have actually changed. The state of Oregon uh, makes a new set of rules for once you're in person, um, the metrics are different. So we wanted to take a minute and just explain that to you. So what you'll see, you got two systems. So our old metric system, and then our, what we're calling our once you're in uh, metric system. So in the old system, we had to track a couple of things, or actually three things to be specific. The first thing was our county case count um, for new cases each week had to be below 10 per 100,000. So in Kirk County, in reality, that meant we could only have two cases per week for three straight weeks. Uh, and fortunately, we met that. But that actually changes. It gets a little looser. So um, now once we're in, uh, the rules change and our county case count cannot be greater than 30 per 100,000 uh, for back-to-back -back weeks. So what that means is uh, in Kirk County, we can have seven cases. Uh, as long as we stay seven cases or below, we're fine. Uh, if we have uh, more than seven cases for back-to-back -back weeks, then we'd have to um, begin planning and, and uh, go back to distance learning. So no consecutive weeks with over 30 cases per 100,000 is the new metric. The second thing we had to track in the old metrics was our county test positivity rate had to remain uh, below 5% per week for three straight weeks. We met that, we're back, and now the new metric is our county test positivity rate cannot be higher than or greater than 10% for back-to-back -back weeks. So we can't have uh, a 10% county test positivity rate higher than 10% for back-to-back -back weeks. And then the third metric that we had to track in order to get in is the state test positivity rate had to be below 5% each week for three weeks. Really good news on this one. That's actually completely eliminated in the new metric system that we're in. Now that we've uh, been able to bring our four through 12 uh, graders to in-person instruction. So here, uh, if you know me, you know I, I love a good chart. Um, so this is our historical data, how we would look in this new system. So for the last six weeks, uh, you'll see in the new system has three zones, uh, a green zone, we'll call it the safe zone. Um, there's this orange kind of warning zone, they call it the transition planning zone. And then there's this red bad zone, um, which would be when we'd have to return to distance learning if we we're in the red zone for two weeks in a row. So you can see this is that first metric that Crook County case count per week has to be below um, 30 cases per 100,000. We cannot go into the red zone over 30 cases per 100,000 for back-to-back -back weeks. However, for example, if let's say Crick County had um, uh, eight cases, which would be above 30 per 100,000, if we had that one week and our, our line kind of shot up into the red zone, but then the next week we were back down where we only had one case, um, then we, it, we wouldn't have to return to distance learning. It's only if you are in the red zone above 30 per 100,000 for back-to-back -back weeks. If we're in this orange zone, um, that just means it's transition planning. It means, hey, we just kind of give a heads up. Hey, we've been in the warning zone for, for multiple weeks. We'll want to make sure that um, people are aware and that we, we might be venturing into the red zone. But you can stay in the, the, the warning zone indefinitely if, if you need to. But uh, as you can see, we want to stay in this green safe zone. So, uh, so we'll definitely try that. Like I said, here's another chart. So this will be the chart we're updating for you all every week where we'll just say how many actual cases are in Crook County um, and whether it's in the safe zone, whether it's in this warning zone or whether it's in that red uh, return to distance learning zone. Here's the zones for our test positivity rate. You can see as long as we stay under 10% test positivity for our county rate, uh, we will uh, be just fine and continue in-person instruction. Just in summary, uh, now that we're in the new metrics, only two uh, measures matter, our case, uh, county case count per 100,000 and our county test positivity rate. 
Um, we can't be in that red zone um, for more than two consecutive weeks with either of those metrics, or we'll have to return to distance learning. Um, you might be asking, does that mean we have to return to distance learning the next day? Um, it actually will follow kind of the same timeline we did for um, coming into in-person learning where we meet and then we say, okay, starting next Monday, um, we'll begin this model. So that's what we would have to do if we were, uh, if we didn't meet those metrics for two straight weeks back to back. Um, we can stay in the warning zone um, and definitely, but it does give us kind of a heads up that we're, we're definitely getting close to that line. Uh, we'll continue to work with our health department for any health issues in schools. Um, and they're always advising us, always making sure we're being as, uh, as careful and precautious. Um, I love the high school. Uh, they come out with their, their motto is stay safe so that we can stay open. And that's definitely how we're all feeling. And then finally, K-3, something you might be saying, is this the same thing for K-3? And, and actually the state says with our kindergarten through third graders, um, we will just collaborate with the health department to assess any kind of situation to determine whether, if, whether we would ever have to return to a, uh, or move to a distance learning format. So. If you're interested in the metrics, um, they're on in the Oregon Department's Fed Ready Schools Safe Learners Guidance, page 14. Um, you can read all, all you want, and you can always get a hold of us here at the district office if you have any questions. Thank you all. Uh, appreciate everyone's hard work and looking forward to uh, continuing a great school year.